Krishna, uh, some scriptures, and in the evening, the Damodar Puja with all the devotees who stayed in our little Lake Ashram. To be very honest with you, I have been 
afraid or a little uncertain. That's the best way. How this month uh, would go for me. Now, since more than 25 years, I'm going each month of Kartik to the sacred land of Brindavan, where I hide somewhere. Mm, sometimes uh, I'm under this tree, sometimes uh, at the side of Giriraj, uh, Govinda Kund, Vashana, etc. And I, w I know that Brindavan gives us a very, very supportive atmosphere. Anyone who comes there, says Srila Prabhupada, is immediately reminded of Krishna. Uh, the atmosphere is full with the prayers of the saints who have walked there since many, many centuries. Mm, every uh, leaf chants the names of Srimati Radharani and Krishna. Uh, Vrindavan in this world is an import of the eternal Vrindavan in the spiritual world. And therefore, there is all the support for spiritual practice which you can imagine. So, this year, due to circumstances, it was not possible uh, to go to Vrindavan and I was afraid how will this month go where I will totally fast from the world <laughs> and uh, only allow Krishna conscious or spiritual impressions in my uh, mind and life. Uh, would it be uh, uh, possible to do this or would I feel very soon like a lonely traveler through a hot and dry desert <laughs> uh, um, who would not experience any taste in uh, the practices. Mm. I was doubtful, but somehow, and I will say why, mm, I could understand uh, uh, or I could receive a whole lot of help which I had not expected. Uh, in my uh, presentation today, the gifts of the month of Kartik, I would like to share with all of you my insights and realizations um, uh, that made also this Kartik Vrata outside of Vrindavan this time, something which I will not, not be able to forget for the rest of my life. I usually mm, uh, end the month of Kartik at the Krishna Balaram uh, temple for the last uh, Damodara Rashtakam and then the next morning the Bhagavatam class. In this class I try to share my insights and realizations and I would like to do this today uh, with all of you on the online uh, mm, mm, forum. I would really like to say, uh, tell you or share with you, that is much better, the tremendous gifts uh, which I could receive and I do hope that by sharing these insights, I will be able to mm, uplift you, uh, strengthen you, maybe mm, clar clarify some doubts. I, d I do not know. I present this as your servant. First of all, this month is a blessed month. So, uh, there is a book which you have heard about for sure, the Hari Bhakti Vilas. And uh, there, uh, the month of Kartik uh, is praised. It is said, just as Lord Damoda is known to be very affectionate to 
for his devotees. His favorite month, Damoda or Kartika, is also very magnanimous because even a small service rendered in this month is accepted as very great. And in other places it is said that amongst all the 12 uh, uh, months in the year, this month of Kartik is equipped with so much blessings that someone who does only a little service during this time is rewarded with a residence or living in Krishna's eternal kingdom. <laughs> that is uh, really the best of all months, which can grant us such uh, blessings for such a small thing as offering, for instance, every evening a lamp uh, to Lord Damodha. Uh, what uh, are my own realizations? You might ask, okay, you were like, uh, uh, how are these people called who retire from life? Like an eremit, maybe? Like a, a reclusive monk? Uh, who went into the forest. Tell us, what did you bring back from the forest? What did you bring back from your spurter practice? My first answer is, my dear listeners, there really is a Krishna. There really is a Radha. There really is Brindavan Dham. And it is possible it is certainly possible in this uh, month uh, to approach those divine realities, to come close to them. Uh, why? Listen very carefully. There is a statement, you are what you eat. It is said about the devatas, the residents of the higher planets, that they drink soma juice every day and by this intake they become immortal. You are what you take inside, you are what you eat or drink. This of course works also in the opposite way. If you drink every day uh, whiskey uh, and you eat meat, then that will show also, most probably in a negative uh, way. It will affect your health in an undesired way. So just imagine the term eating is not restricted to only what you take through the mouth or, or drink through the mouth. No. It refers to ahara or any sensual intake. Whatever you hear, whatever you see, whatever you smell and touch will form you, shape you. Uh, every cell of your subtle body will be influenced and either nourished or depleted by what you see, what you hear. And imagine now someone who fasts the world and feasts on, on uh, spiritual impressions, how he will change. If I don't take certain normal uh, experiences any longer. I don't see, uh, hear, and most important, think about the things which occupy us all in this world. Mm. 
I am not I am not taking in any anxieties, uh, any material greed, any uh, disturbance. No, but I'm only chanting, uh, reading, remembering, meditating, and worshiping Krishna. Wow, that will shape me. That will entirely influence and uplift my consciousness uh, to the better. It is an absolute law. You are what you eat. You are what you take in. So during the month of Kartik, mm, mm, or it can be also done obviously at any time, any day of the year, if someone uh, uh, takes in only the nourishing uh, input of Krishna consciousness. He will make Krishna conscious experience. He will actually have momentary glances of Radha and Krishna. He will experience also uh, very nice devotional feelings, desires to move on this path. And he will naturally lose his strong appetite for material uh, illusions and uh, that entangle the soul always. There is even such a verse, Bhakti Parishanu Bhavo Viraktya Anyatra Chaisha. I think you do know uh, and recognize this uh, verse, which says that um, if you make nourishing Krishna conscious experiences, uh, you will uh, experience three things. You will experience great satisfaction, uh, you will experience exp uh, perception of Krishna in some form or another, and you will become detached from material entanglement. That is one of the principles which makes uh, uh, made this stay uh, uh, or Kartik Vrata, even though it was done in Europe, mm, uh, uh, so successful. And it's a principle which all of you, uh, all of us can take with us. Uh, if you can't fast the world entirely due to these deeply ingrained habits, habits and patterns, but if, if you take on more and more spiritual nourishment, you will automatically uh, come on the right path of experience of Krishna. This is the first uh, thing I wanted to talk about, about. This, of course, works especially during, during such a blessed month where every little effort in spiritual life is rewarded million times over. Uh, the second uh, theme which I would like to address is something which I tried to um, explain during my Kartik inspirations. Uh, you are where your mind is. This year we could not physically go to Vrindavan. One devotee, Madhava Prabhu, uh, was able because he is an um, overseas Indian pass passport holder uh, to go and he made uh, all, all these or most of these wonderful uh, pictures, fresh pictures from Vrindavan as it looks today. Uh, or looked at during the month. Huh? Uh, but most of us, including all of you, I mean, not in, yes, including all of you, uh, were staying in Europe, America, China, China Alaska, or wherever. Uh, but you could maybe see uh, if, uh, that you could go or contact Vrindavan. 
And this is due to a very special feature, uh, which I can best explain by sharing with you the crowning ceremony of Shimati Radharani, where she was officially declared to be the queen of Vrindavan. Ponamasi uh, conducted this beautiful ceremony and on the morning of the ceremony she dressed in a white sari, took on an asan, a sitting place, and in her mind called the heavenly ladies, Uma, Samya, Chaya, the wives of the sun god. By meditation she called for them and all of a sudden all the rich Basis who were there for this ceremony where Radharani was uh, based at the queen of Vindavan and uh, adorned and ornamented as such, all of a sudden they, he had heard a deep rumbling sound. Uh, chariots were coming through the air and then uh, the atmosphere became full of a very unusual light and they could see chariots parking a little bit uh, uh, away and out of these chariots the heavenly ladies, the wives of the great demigods who had been called by Purnamasi were alighting and they moved as if they floated and came to Purnamasi. Purnamasi said, Swagatam, welcome heavenly ladies. Um, the pedestrian or podium is ready and there you see on the throne uh, Brishabhanu Nandini Shimati Radharani and yes Radharani was sitting there mm, uh, waiting uh, for one person that is Sri Krishna. She only had in mind when will Krishna arrive I'm only making this for his pleasure. Uh, when will he come? So they moved over and they showered Srimati Radharani with flower petals while Ponamasi uh, was uh, mm, attending mantras. And as they affectionately worshipped Radha, a light came out of Radha and all of Vrindavan, even the bulls and the calves were bathed in this golden loving effulgence of Srimati Radhika who accepted the worship. So as uh, Sangya, she's one of the two wives of uh, Surya, saw this effulgence she said, this Radha is more fortunate even than Lakshmi Devi and her kingdom should be very, very vast. It should be the whole and entire universe. But I see that this Vrindavan is a small place, hardly 40 square miles in size. So, when the sister of Krishna, who was also there, heard this, uh, she answered, Oh, listen everyone. Yes, it is well known that Vindavan measures only five yojanas, or 40 miles. But it is not like other places. Thus, in ancient times, Lord Brahma himself 
saw all the countless universes situated in just one corner of Vrindavan. You remember when uh, Brahma tested Krishna by stealing all the calves and cowherd boys and Krishna expanded himself in Vishnus who then uh, all adopted um, the bodies of the stolen calves and cowherd boys. You remember also how there was absolutely no difference between the original set of boys and calves and the one which was expanded by Lord Krishna. Brahma came and he saw, whoop, I, I thought I stole them, but here they are. And then Krishna, in order to show him, revealed uh, the innumerable forms of uh, the Lord Vishnu, um, also known as Vasudev, um, and uh, four armed forms. And uh, uh, Brahma saw how from everywhere uh, uh, the uh, other Brahmas came to worship and the universes were uh, there all in a corner of Vrindavan. Do you remember this, said K Krishna's sister? This shows us that uh, uh, in one little dust uh, uh, particle of Vrindavan, uh, unlimited space <laughs> is uh, included. Huh? Space and time, the two big uh, uh, parameters in this world, are transcended uh, by Vrindavan. That means Vrindavan is all-pervading and one meaning of Dham, Vrindavan Dham, is splendor, just like light extends and travels very far. Vrindavan is everywhere, even in England. Or, dare I say it, Germany <laughs> or America. It is there. And those who come into Vrindavan consciousness, whose consciousness connects with Vrindavan, they immediately make a link and they are immediately able to contact the Dham wherever they are. Not, it's not just a little dot on the Indian map, it's all pervading and therefore, yes, if your mind is in Vindavan, you are in Vindavan. I have uh, on my writing table a little calendar which I will ask Hari Seva to bring for us um, because there, Prabhupada makes transcendental mathematics. There, uh, he gives a formula, yes, by which we can in, be in Vindavan. He says, 5 plus 5 is equal to... <laughs> Don't worry, it's quite conventional in the beginning. 5 plus 5 is equal to 10. 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. So, then he makes his point. Krishna plus everything is Vrindavan. Krishna plus everything is Vrindavan. Krishna plus all the things of your life is Vrindavan. So do not forget Krishna and you shall always be in Vrindavan. So do, <laughs> during the month of Kartik, for most of us, according to our availability, we put Krishna more in the center. And as we are doing this, we, we are more and more and more in Vrindavan. We put Krishna a little in our center, we are a little in Vrindavan, and we put Krishna a lot in our center, we are a lot in Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, 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 
share this. The third thing which I wanted to share with you is um, something so beautiful that I feel very shy to reveal it. Mm. Almost hesitant. But now, because it fills my heart, I must speak about it. So I was trying, like all of you, to increase my uh, spiritual activities during this month. And now the last two days, miracles happened. I receive phone calls after phone calls from Vindavan, uh, from the bridge buses. One bridge bus uh, phoned me yesterday uh, evening time. Uh, it must have been rather late uh, in Vindavan and said, Maharaj, everyone is talking, where are you? Where are you? I said, but, but I, I never talk to anyone. Yes, but everyone has seen you and observed you. And they all uh, uh, say uh, we should greet you. I thought, wow, really, me? Yes. And then uh, the devotee, uh, Brijbasi, went uh, uh, to a few temples uh, and showed me Radha Gopinath, Radha Govinda, Radha Madan Mohan. It was very, <laughs> very loving. Then mm, I received a voice message by the mm, well-known and very affectionate Pundarik uh, uh, Goswami. He gives a lot of public katas and like his father, he's extremely sympathetic to Iskon and a few of uh, the older devotees are very uh, deep fr friends of um, him and he said mm, Maharaj people talk about COVID-19 and they are panic about it but I do know that you have a greater panic in your heart you could not come to Vrindavan but I want to say to you we are all missing you and thinking of you and uh, when you are separated from something that is very important for you, then uh, you will certainly, uh, the next time you meet uh, that person, have much, much more uh, love and appreciation. Separation facilitates meeting. Yeah, then... Um, Simple bridge passes uh, uh, showed me parts of Vindavan with their uh, uh, mobile telephones. <laughs> and uh, Krishna Murari Goswami from Nandagram showed me an aratik of Krishna Balaram. And uh, in this way, I could receive many, many, many greetings from Vindavan, and I could understand. Krishna is taking care. Maybe the greatest realization is that point which Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur made. We are all the time seen. We are all the time perceived. We are all the time noticed. We only see a small little fraction of reality, maybe like an ant which crawls over a table. I can see the ant walking by the clock, by the recording, uh, by the mobile telephone, and the ant doesn't understand the clock or the recording device or the mobile telephone. It does not understand that we are looking at the end, but uh, uh, we may even come and take a piece of paper and say, my dear little end, you're coming too close to the prashadam, and we may put it under the uh, legs of the end and 
put it softly somewhere else, and the end thinks I'm flying <laughs> and does not understand. So in the same way as an end is moved and seen, we are also moved by Krishna, who notices us all the time, especially at a time when we turn uh, to him in sincere prayer. Uh, mm, mm, he has a weak spot in his heart. He likes his devotees. There is a prayer by Vilva Mangala Thakur, which I would like to share with you. It's really good. It's really nice. Uh, oh Krishna, he says, when the brahmanas chant your hymns, you become very shy and you are not seen by them. You are not revealing yourself to the brahmanas who, who chant hymns to you. But you roll in the dust of the courtyards of the gopas in Vrindavan because they have love for you. The brahmanas do things out of duty. Yogis sit for a long time in Padmasan. They want to see you in the heart. Uh, finally, at the end, they see you in the heart, but you don't talk to them. However, if one small calf in Vrindavan says one moo, you immediately come. It doesn't have to do any pranayam and asanas. And you sit with the calf and talk to the calf. Do you wish to go now? Is the rope which is holding you too tight? Do your friends don't talk with you? Or, or do you experience some difficulty with the heat? You asked hundreds of things of the calf, but you talk only where you, you hardly talk, hardly talk to the yogis. Why? Because they do things out of mechanical duty, but the calf loves you. The prayer addresses a few more people who do certain spiritual practices to gain Krishna. And it always contrasts that you don't become revealed by these practices, but you run uh, uh, with the gopis and carry their cow dung on your head because they love you. This is Krishna in Vrindavan. He responds only to love and nothing more. And that I could experience also as I was chanting the holy name. Um, uh, it's not so important, I found out, to be absolutely mind-focused uh, and, and mm, be able to sit for many, many hours without moving. No, that's not important. But what is important, or the way that Krishna responds to the chanting is, when you can do it out of love, or out of genuine affection, whenever you lose the connection while chanting, for instance, all of a sudden Krishna is gone. Prabhupada spoke about this in 68, when he made a morning walk with his early disciples in San Francisco. Mm. He said, uh, chanting Hare Krishna and praying to Krishna, please give me strength. Hare, O oh energy of the Lord, I am fallen. I have no strength. Please accept me. Prabhupada goes on, I have no qualification. I'm frail, I'm trying, yet I'm failing. All these appeals 
should be made. And Krishna is so powerful, he can do anything. Even if we just tr try our best, or if we do not perform, even if we fail, Krishna will help us. Just like a child. If it falls and cries, Mother, the mother will pick it up. What I want to come to is a takeaway of the month of Kartik. Um, something which uh, is, I think, a most encouraging message to all of us. Uh, often devotees tell me, Maharaj, I'm hopeless. I always fall back into my old patterns of thinking and behaving. I don't have much hope in my progress. And I answer, yes, alone you are helpless. But with Krishna's help, you are very hopeful. Your case is very hopeful. Uh, and here is the point. Krishna is not requiring the highest qualifications like the Brahmanas have, the Yogis have, the, uh, those who offer Vedic sacrifices have. He is a God of love and only wants to see that you are trying your best, whatever your best is. Uh, there is a work of Jiva Goswami, um, Bhakti San, I mean the six Sandhavas, and I will um, uh, substantiate this point, which is so encouraging, by reading to you uh, something which Jiva Goswami said. If someone develops the attitude of being a servant of Lord Krishna, by this attitude alone one attains perfection. One may not do anything, one may just know, I am a servant of Krishna. By this inner orientation, this inner attitude, one attains perfection. What to speak, he continues, of the actual effort to serve the Lord. So you may think this is such a revolutionary point. We would like to hear a little bit more to really have a uh, uh, conviction in this, in this bhava, in this inner feeling. And uh, uh, I was very happy we have here in uh, where we live before Berlin, a little a group who meets for kirtan. Uh, they're called Braj Darshan. I'm looking to go Krishna. Mm. There is a conference, uh, mm, uh, something like this, mm. and uh, one devotee put something in this conference, uh, a quotation from Prabhupada. Mm. Uh, in, uh, if one simply continues to think that he is an eternal servant of Krishna, even without performing any other process of devotional service, he can attain full success. In your life, think, I'm a servant of Krishna, I belong to Krishna, Krishna is my eternal master. And remain in this attitude, uh, I'm not separated from Krishna. Although now I'm in the world uh, and I'm so 
overwhelmed by so many uh, things that come to me, birth, old age, disease, or the big disease of modern uh, life, anxiety, you, you know, um, think, whatever it is, I'm simply a part of Krishna, a servant of Krishna. And this, my dear devotees, is your perfection. It is, of course, the beginning on the road to perfection, but from it all perfection will come. No? One will attain full success, or as Jiva Goswami says, by this attitude alone one attains perfection. This is like a spark, a small spark that you have and that will grow and grow so that ultimately you will be able to do uh, many things from there, offering prayers, dedicating mm, the result of your activities, worshipping Krishna, like many of you did, uh, remembering Krishna. And you will like to know more and more about Krishna. This is a uh, very, very doable thing which you can do in your devotional service. So, Prahlad Maharaj was talking about this. He had uh, just uh, seen the Leela of Nishinga Dev. It took place in 48 minutes, the whole Leela, beginning to end, pass, 48 minutes. This is the Lord with the shortest Leela on this world. And uh, Falad had seen this, uh, um, what Lord Nishingadev had come out of a stone pillar. He had dealt with the furious Hiranyakashipu and all his armies. And he, uh, uh, when the Lord was still angry and the ears were trembling, tick, 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 like a lion's ear, tick, 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 they were, uh, and his tongue was moving like a sword. Prahlad stood there and he prayed to the Lord. He was only five years of age. Children who are five years, or, uh, they will never speak a lie. They always tell the truth. Maybe you have seen with your children. Sometimes it's uncomfortable truths which they speak. And he said, uh, first of all, uh, I'm born in the family of Asuras. Can I really offer prayers? And then he caught himself and he said, I have seen that not even the learned Lord Brahma, not even the saintly people who are in the world can satisfy the Lord by all the excellent words that, that they can up. But this one elephant, Gajendra, he was attacked by a crocodile and he simply called out to you uh, with love and devotion and you immediately appeared and uh, you uh, helped him uh, uh, get uh, free from the grip of the crocodile. So I have seen you are very merciful. You respond to genuine love and affection, not to high material qualifications. That is your, your wonderful nature. And when Krishna sees someone just thinking, I'm the servant, I'm the servant, I'm the servant. At the moment, I'm not able to render first class service, but still I'm the servant and he is my master. From that little understanding, you will attain all the perfection, especially in the month of Kartik, yeah? where we did a little seva uh, by waving the lamp. As we are coming to the end, I want to wrap it all up. I found a very, very nice uh, scripture which summarizes 
what bhakti uh, does. And I must say, I could experience, maybe not fully, but in some part, all these blessings of bhakti. Um, and this was experienced during the month of Kartik by many, 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 many people who are in contact um, and who said uh, the same thing. The treasury of bhakti contains the following treasures. First of all, um, one gets a desire to achieve the ultimate goal of life. That is when you do bhakti uh, a little bit, you think, oh, I really want, I really want Krishna, I really want this. Then you will be interested in the jewels of the Vedic literature. How can I find more, out more about Krishna? You will go to the uh, 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 jewels of bhakti. Uh, and there uh, uh, to the Vedic scriptures and there you will find uh, true spiritual knowledge. A little bhakti gives you a current of the ocean which is spiritual bliss. We have uh, seen that every evening we did our Damoda Puja. Go Krishna was singing. Uh, uh, our Padmakshi was playing kartals. Um, Hari Seva at the end was also preaching, not preaching, he was uh, singing very beautifully. Uh, Banu Nandini came also to attend the ceremony. It was very, very blissful. We could all feel. Uh, uh, and one sees the bridge, which is the means of crossing the ocean of material existence. And when you do bhakti, you see, wow, in this way I can actually cross over the ocean of material existence. And you will also stay, see a stairway uh, uh, to the kingdom of immortality. You will think, yeah, the first step, second step, third step, then one day I will do this, and in this way I will go to the eternal kingdom of God. Uh, in one word, Bhakti gives hope. Deep, realistic hopes and the means by which this hope can be fulfilled. Yeah, I feel not so happy <laughs> that I don't want to end here, uh, but uh, we have more going on. Uh, today uh, we s is the first day where we start to leave our cave, to go away from the tree, and we are very, uh, under which we stayed one month, and to share with others. Uh, uh, let us continue to remain spiritually inspired also after the month of Kartik. Uh, for this I'm offering you my uh, services in the form of online courses and seminars. I want to make announcements how we can stay in contact. First, the Facebook Live uh, there is monthly online Agora meditation. We will discuss the beautiful Kata of Lord uh, Chaitanya who has opened a door through which everyone can easily go blissfully towards Radha and Krishna. Blissfully. Uh, so it's monthly online. You will find the announcements on this on my Facebook page. Uh, uh, you will uh, see on F Facebook Live also monthly online presentations on the heart of the Holy Name. These are monthly training seminars 
to support your practice of japa and kirtan. They are very practice oriented. Uh, the next uh, heart of the holy name, we will speak about a very amazing technique that allows the chanter to leave the worldly mind and come into the inner center of the spiritual heart where there is the Lord present. And on the, yes, on the, the third thing on the Facebook is various online uh, seminars like th this lecture today or courses and so on. And you will see always announcements for the ne next things that are happening uh, in, uh, in, uh, in there. Uh, you can find the face, my Facebook link in the comment section. Uh, it, should, it should now go bling, 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 <laughs> most properly, or, or something like this. Secondly, my dear devotees, uh, there, I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, yes, I'm a very, very, very modern man. <laughs> you can watch video recordings from various courses, like uh, two things I would like to really ex um, uh, I recommend to you. There's actually three. One is Kirtan experience, how you can dive into a real uh, experience of the Holy Name. Then something which those who have seen it have, they found it very helpful, Bhakti Essentials. It gives you the fundament of Bhakti. Mm, and then the Living Name, a whole seminar on the Living Name uh, and so on. You can also watch five minute long wisdom videos <laughs> especially now it's winter there we have a few very nice one from the summer but they always bring a deep point i mean trying trying uh, then third announcement mm, it is uh, soundcloud on soundcloud you can listen to all previous kartik inspirations from this year and the past few years. There you can also find daily Japa inspirations. They are only five mi minutes long uh, to aid your daily Japa experience. And you can find their recordings of all meditations and exercises from the Living Name Book. This is of course the Living Name Book. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, like here, 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 here. Oops, like this. <laughs> Good. Uh, uh, this book you can. Oh my God, this, this, I, I'm I'm like a, a, a market here. <laughs> Good. Uh, and finally, uh, you can visit this evening's class. It's a Ma Sangha uh, from the Mena School of Bhakti. It's about the God who steals. <laughs> I cannot tell you more. It starts this evening at 8.30 p.m. Uh, Central European time. The Zoom link is also in your comments as well. Good. I'm very, very happy uh, that uh, I could talk to you. And my takeaway is please stay in the mood of I belong to you, Krishna. I'm your servant. And from there, you will attain all perfection uh, because it will open some good devotional feelings. Mm. We will now end the section by J J Sri. See